All right, hey, thanks for tuning in for today's stream. I'll be working on Drupal Rector again, and this contribution stream is contribution stream is sponsored by Palantir.net, a remote first agile company that gives back to the Drupal project and community. Like by sponsoring my time to work on Drupal Rector. Um, Drupal Rector is a library that integrates with the Rector project to automate refactoring of deprecated or other code. So it's used to help make the jumps from major versions of Drupal a lot easier. And I say that, I mean like Drupal 8 to 9 and 9 to 10. You don't use this for Drupal 7 to another major version. If you are looking for a job, they have a job opening for a Drupal engineer. You can learn more and apply at www.palantir.net. Again, thanks for Palantir for sponsoring this. Um, they sponsored five live streams, I think now, and then they sponsored another five. I think this is the fourth one. So nine total um, to work on Drupal Rector and make it possible um, to work for the next steps. I wanted to quick share too. If you are interested and in, you're like, okay, what's this php stand drupal drupal check drupal rector and upgrade status like there's all these things um, i wrote a blog post about that on my blog at mglomin.dev i'm gonna share it in the chat um, for anybody that's on right now and if you're watching the recording just go to my website it should be one of the first ones i don't have a lot of time to blog lately um, but it gives a good overview on what all the different tools are for but what i'm going to work on today Today, I'm gonna to work on um, fixing a few of the Rector rules. So we have several rules that fix deprecated methods that are when in the context of a browser test, but they're actually allowed if it's a kernel test, because in a kernel test, you can make a, a sub request to the HTTP kernel and render the response. And some of the traits, some of the, the methods that were deprecated are still okay in the kernel test for um, asserting response data. So we need to fix this up um, and add in this trait. So I'm going to go ahead and get over to PHP Storm. Let's see, and make sure that I'm up to date with the upstream. So git fp is an alias I have for git fetch prune. So let's rebase off of main and push that to my fork. Um, let's go ahead and do composer update as well. Right, looks like there's a bunch going in. And one thing I always do is run the tests. Let's see, let's make sure this test is going at let's just go right click i'm gonna do oh it's indexing so it can't i'm gonna hit play so every time there's an update i always rerun our tests because there's a chance that something could have changed in the rector upstream and caused uh breakages so i like to get a baseline ahead of time so let's go ahead and look at this example so where did i link 175 past rector more specific so let's go ahead and load this up So pass rector. So declaring source. Here's what I did in my last, on the last stream. Oh, we're indexing, so it's not going to show up. So I created a trait called get declaring source. Don't know if it's the best name or not, but it works. And what that allows you to do, if we look at get declaring source. So given an expression, which in this case is a method call, a method call or property fetch is what's supported. Um, yeah, so that's the case here. So it's like, all right, who is calling this method or where is this method or property defined? And what it goes through is it finds who declared that property and method. So if it's declared in a trait, we return the trait name. If it's from the class itself, we return the class name. So inside pass rector and others, we can see if it's in the correct um, trait to remove. Um, we can make sure that we're removing the correct one. And even inside our test, if we look at pass rector fixture. So in here, um, browser test space mock, it actually overrides pass and it doesn't delete it because pass is defined in the class and not the attribute. Unlike here where it says that pass is defined in the traits. 
So we're just making it a little bit smarter is what we're the, the goal is to do, um, which I need to get my Drupal 9 environment ready. Uh, let's see, CD Drupal sites, PHP storm, Drupal core dev. So this is on what branch? It's taken a good minute. All right, we are on 9.0.x. So let's go ahead. I wish I would just would have wrote everything down in here, but we'll so assert content trait. So we want to just go through and anything that's in here as an assert. So why don't I open the structure tab? I did command seven and it's like build XPath query. You know, I think there's a rector from this, just anything that's in here, we want to make sure is supported because this is not deprecated. But if we were to look for, if we search for this function, we can see in functional test. Oh, this is not. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Functional test, assert legacy trait, open that. We can see here it has the deprecated text. So it was deprecated in browser test for functional testing, but not in kernel test against the uh, sub request content. So it's things like that we need to fix. And luckily we can just implement get the clearing source. So what we should do is, oh, there's a lot in here. Um, let's see, assert link. So this is one, oh, they're all, geez, a lot of these exist in here. No field by XPath. Wait, did they just copy in? Almost, every, hold, let's, This looks like a certain no option, no option, no option by text, no option by text. Oh, well, geez. A certain no field, a certain no construct field X path. So did all this really just get copied over? Let's, I'm gonna annotate this. Um, so this is from 2018. Break kernel test dependency on simple test, deprecate stub BC traits. All right, so this was the main break from simple test into full on PHP unit. Where they made the assert content trait. we have here and then so we have these two so we have assert content and assert legacy trait and these two legacy these legacy traits were these legacy traits are all deprecated so I guess we may as well just start here and make sure that this matches our base trait so assert we're going to start the opposite way um, and I should make another branch, another branch. Let's copy the issue ID, ensure, correct, assert. Uh, check source, check the clearing source. That's what we'll call it. That's what we'll call this one. So the first up, we've got assert, where assert rector is right here. I wonder if we should add it to, actually assert legacy trait base should also have use declaring source trait. Um, 
we'll say detected declaring source so let's look at pass rector is this the one let's see if we have Well, I know I did this in another S2. Here we go. So by default, we are we want to scope things to the functional legacy trait. Um, so this base class is used by a bunch of these different rectors as a way to streamline. So to start, we're going to make sure that the declaring source matches a certain legacy trait. And then the ones that are in R that are actually on this kernel test will modify the property. So let's go ahead and copy rector. Let's copy this line. So here we say if the current node name is not the deprecated method name, return null. Let's add one in here. It says if this declaring source is not equal to this declaring source return null so if this doesn't match we're also going to return null run oh i'm still running several tests there are a lot of them all right so i'm actually going to just stop this at the start Oh, class name was assert pattern rector. Oop. Assert header rector test, we'll fix that. Nope, that's just a bad file name. All right. So let's go, what's the first one to do? So assert, let's do, let's do the assert rector test. This should fail because it's not going to match. Because we need to update the assert rector to check the proper um, declaring source. So I'm gonna go method assert was not found in reflection. All right, so before we get too far into it, let's update some of our stubs. So we have, we can't add Drupal as a dependency. So we have some stub files that get auto loaded. And let's see, this is in a cert legacy trait for kernel tests. So kernel test, cert legacy trait. Add that. So let's, if we rerun our test, so it said that it couldn't define that. Now it could find it. And we see that it was not removed. It was not fixed rather. So let's go into the assert rector and now we can change the declaring source equals, let's copy the reference. So now if we rerun it, it should pass. All right, so that worked. So that's one. So we did assert. Assert equal is also one. So let's go to the test. We'll run it. We should get some failures because we're also having to add in all the stub data as well. So it's not glamorous work, but we're just strengthening it up to prevent bugs from happening when people use this to modify their code. So assert equal. And we know what's going to happen. That should fail. Oh, it was not a reflection. Hold on. Assert not equal. Oh, this was copied. This needs to be added in as well. Again, didn't work. So let's go to the 
assert pass. We're going to copy this one. And we need assert equals. Or assert equal. And also assert not equal. If we run it. So that passes. So we got assert, assert equal, assert not equal. Now we're on to assert identical and not identical. Well, let's look at the test to see which ones I should copy over. So config fixture. Actually, if I look at the configured rules, we have identical, not identical, and identical object. So I need these three rules or these three stubs so they're identical so they're not identical and certain object Actually, assert identical object rector. Okay, good. This does replace. So if we go through, let's see, copy that line. And if we go to these tests, configure rule, paste that. And there. Congrats. Oh, thanks. I always like it when uh, Dreefs gives a little Twitter love to a blog post. Um, and I'm glad that uh, so that some people found it useful. Um, like one thing I was told is some folks were confused if PHP stand, Drupal, and Drupal check were still going to be a thing after my blog post where I was like, I'm halting development and didn't see that I said I got development funding. Um, and then the fact that I was working on Rector, they were con they were concerned that the projects weren't um, in good status, but they are, they are. Um, and I hope that blog post helped showed like, you know, the, the wider ecosystem of everything and the status. And it's like, I'm not working on those as much because they're basically good to go for right now. Thank you, Corn Cob, for uh, subscribing. All right, so there we go, those three. Okay, assert pass. This one's taken care of already. This is like the most mind numbing. I feel like Rector is like working on Rector is one of those things that this should be really easy to do. Like it's like a junior level work in the sense that it's just like just copying code and shuffling it, but it is in no way a project you should put a junior on to do. Um, and I, I never know how to handle those kind of projects where it's like, you don't really need like a senior level person to do it. You just need somebody that can just, do the code, but it has intricacies. Um, and I've always wondered how people handle that kind of setup. Like, do you, do you just write a lot of notes and then hope it goes well? All right. Um, verbose actually wasn't covered before. Actually, it's not deprecated, so never mind. Um, wait, maybe. Hold on, let's do. Run zero, check out nine one. Please don't take forever. Roll, no, roll back my workspace. Okay, verbose is not deprecated there. Two. Two looks good. Ah, oh, yep, there it is, deprecated in nine dot two. Okay. Um. 
Let me copy. Oh, no, it's there. If I would have paid attention, um, I would have known that. All right. So next on the list. Okay, so that was everything in assert legacy trait. I guess I should get on 9.3.x when looking through this. Let me do a pull. So let's go ahead and see how bad I broke everything. Oh, whoa, ah, wait a second. Drupal core dev, hold on, continue resolve. Oh, wait, I was testing a patch that landed. Oh yeah, right, I was testing a patch that landed in 9.3.x and that's why it conflicted. Um, all right, let's look here. So assert tr legacy trait base, so I created a base class early on that made it easier for renaming a bunch of these PHP unit deprecations, especially when it says, oh, this used to be a base method. Now it's actually a method on the assert session itself. Now we're just adding a check to make sure the declaring class is correct. Was it declared in the functional test assert legacy trait or the kernel test assert legacy trait? Because some of the kernel tests were moved to assert content trait. I hope that makes some sense because I still get myself hung up on it. And these ones were all from assert legacy trait that do not exist in assert content trait. And these are all the additional stubs. And this fix is a file name. So let's copy that issue number. I struggle with that every day. The code is easy knowing what to code and write and how to design it. Not so junior most of the time. Yep. And it's one like you start architecting it and then you realize you wrote half of it. But sometimes that is what you have to do is just like code it enough to get it to this weird blob and then hand it off with instructions on how to finish sculpting it with having juniors and mid-level developers. Um, assert legacy uh, scope rectors based on declaring class scope assert legacy legacy trait rectors based on the clearing class that looks like it makes sense um and like going on the whole like handoff like is this a senior thing is this a junior thing oh that's yep that's just a warning because it's a sub file um it's especially hard if you're working on something that's not normal for you um, like I have a, one of my projects through my company is a Laravel application and it's not only Laravel, but it was built with Lumen. So it's the Lumen framework, which is like the micro framework from Laravel back when like micro frameworks were the hot thing to do, like as a subset of the main framework. It's like, there's some stuff that I know is not senior level but I don't even know how to begin architecting it and explaining it to be able to hand off to a junior in mid um, without them just going into the weeds. Sometimes I do just throw it into the lead, to the weeds. The Git panel isn't a modal. Yeah, that they added it to the sidebar. You can change it back somehow. Um, I've grown to actually like it because command zero toggles the commit tab now and command nine toggles the tree. So it's made it a lot easier to toggle between the two different screens. Um, so I've begun to like that because I'm pretty sure before like nine, nine would bring up the commit as well, but it would pop up the modal, but this way it's kind of nicer and easier to always have available. Yeah, I switched to the modal at first and then, then uh, switched to the modal first and then I ended up going back to give that a try. And I've liked it so far. Yeah, Lumen, you don't, yeah, the docs don't work. It's like, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z. Well, guess what? It doesn't work with Laravel. And I don't think they haven't officially discontinued Lumen, but there was a um a Twitter thread, like who's the creator of Laravel? It's like Taylor, right? I think. But basically said, yeah, you shouldn't make Lumen after like new Lumen projects after PHP 7. Yeah. 
different dependencies. We had to add elastic search indexing and that was a whole, there's one thing I do love about the Drupal community is um, our search API. So thanks drunken monkey. The, I hope I, that's your D.O username. Um, the search API work in Drupal is phenomenal and is so much easier. Um, because Laravel adding elastic, we tried to use um, elastic quint, which is the eloquent ORM like elastic search, but that only allows less to search, I think like six or seven and only for Laravel. Well, then we found this other adapter that works with Elasticsearch 8, and we had to manually implement a bunch of the model stuff. So, like, that that shouldn't have really been, like, a hard thing, because it's, like, install this package. But then it's like, oh, well, they have to go spend a bunch of time on the internet trying to figure things out, which isn't bad. Um, one of the things that I am enjoying doing with the project and the subcontractors I have is helping them level up their skills so it's, it's not time wasted, but it just makes some of those decisions hard. Because like, are you setting somebody up for failure or are you actually going to help them grow? Um, target, assert, legacy, freight, methods based on, decla on declaring sources. Do not accidentally clean up. So concentrate methods for kernel tests when pruning deprecated functional test methods. I think that makes sense. So that's funny. Um, the fact that the router can bite you hard, that got flagged. I didn't realize it got flagged because it just showed it like, like a thread, but apparently because it was, uh, might have been inappropriate. All right, so we've got one fail. Wait, did PHP unit? Oh yeah, PHP unit can only run on PHP eight. I'm assuming this is failing spectacularly, um, because of all these other methods not being on the stubs. So now it's time to basically go through this list and add all the missing stub items. So we've got assert cache tag and assert no cache tag. Let's go back to Drupal core. Um, so we've got, we know that it's not in the kernel test. So that should mean it's only deprecated in, I guess everything else. Now I guess it's just adding the stubs. Um, Cause everything else is going to be inside of here which I'm just gonna copy from 9.0. So that way I don't have to force check out. That way I don't have to do this, deleting the copy of the trigger errors. Or I guess that's, oh, oh there we go, check out. Let's roll back the workspace, I like, the oh there we go that okay it's still gonna show it i like the fact that when you change a branch it goes to the workspace normally like when i am working on a project and i have three different branches i'm working on and they're not fully related but times like this where i just need to compare between branches it's a little annoying but i don't want to turn it off because it is useful all right, so this needs to go, well, first let's go and replicate this locally. Press the play button. What is going on here? Why aren't you showing me the PHP unit thing? All right, well, maybe because the other PHP storm's indexing, it's just being silly. Well, that's silly um, because the other PHP storm window was indexing. This didn't show me all, no, okay. I saw it highlight and I thought, I saw it highlight and I thought I had X debug running, which I had this listening here. Let's turn that off. Um, yep, all right. What am I copying? That's what I copied. 
stubs, functional test, assert legacy trait, correct. So now it's time to start copying these in. This is search session. I wonder if this will break. Assert legacy trait, abstract. So if you aren't familiar with this concept of using stubs, it is something that, um, is that return Drupal test web assert? Oh, well, gosh, goodly. PHP store, Stan uses this too. And it's just basically a way of providing like minimal code for the IDE and the um, abstract syntax tree parser to pick up. But now we need to also copy this class. So this is in the Drupal tests namespace. I don't think it actually matters here because we're using a class map. But we have test, browser test base. Now we need class web assert. So we got it at the top here. Let's copy this. We have a cert. Oh, please don't. I hope this doesn't cause more errors either. But now, assert legacy trait, assert session. Let's run it. Assert no cache tag. Okay, good. It didn't completely get angry with me. Yes, we added the, I, I used the, it's by like Perry V, I think is the namespace. Uh, I'm not sure. This Henry, maybe, I don't know. Either way, they, they the, the user has a whole bunch of like Laravel packages that are great for the developer experience. Um, so we have that in our composer update to generate um, PHP storm helpers or PHP storm. There he is. Barry VDH. Harry. What, how would I, okay. There's the H at the end. I don't know, but Barry VDH. Thank you for your Laravel work. Um, it dumps PHP storm metadata along with a few other things. Um, it can rewrite your model classes to add all the property declarations on the PHP doc which is really neat to do. Um, I know one thing I want to do on one of my Friday streams is I was going to bring the type data system to Laravel for your models to automatically generate methods for relationships and um, scope queries and property definitions, along with maybe being able to automatically generate your migration scripts from them. Um, I just need to find time for that because I, Laravel is kind of fun but there's just things that I wish were better around models. Um, so I want to experiment with that. Kind of take some Drupal stuff and bring it to Laravel. Um, at first I thought it was unnecessary, but after working with it, it's definitely necessary. So you could automatically have your casts defined based on the type data you've set for the properties and a few things like that. Um, so that's, that's, that's an, an eventual thing, you know, because I've got 5,000 things on my list as it goes. First, I want to get Simply Test launched for the new version. Then I have some Civi CRM stuff I need to do, and then it can be there. Then I can work on that. Um, assert element present. Let's get this going. Let's see. Yeah, at first I thought it would be cool to do but then I was like, oh, well, I guess it's kind of useless. But then after I started working with um, model serialization and having issues with booleans not being casted correctly or the date formats, that's when I was like, oh, Drupal has its typed data system with all of its you know, settings. This could be mapped in, like it could dynamically set the cast values on construction or boot, right? The models have a boot process. So when the model's booted, you could set all the casts. Um, so those are some ideas that were floating in my head that can improve the model. We could take Drupal's type data thing and make it more, more, take Drupal's type data API 
even though it's not its own package, but implement it on another platform. Oh, you think there might be a, there? I imagine there's got to be something. Uh, I don't know what all of the what is all there. Let's see, assert element. Make sure I get this going. Let's run this test and make sure it's good to go. Once I have to assert element, assert not element, assert not escaped or no escaped. But this is one assert no escaped is allowed on kernel test, but not inside of the functional test. So that's where we're going to copy this as well. Escape, let's run that. That should be fine. Assert escaped. Assert header. That's not where I need to go. So assert header. Assert link by, I don't know how people say it, but I say href. I don't say href, it's href. It's, it's one word. I think that's one of the most awkward parts about live coding is all the ways that you've said things in your head. Um, you say out loud and you're not sure if they're quite right or not. Assert link. Start just going through this list, assert no link. The one hill I will die on though, is it is GIF. It is not GIF, it is not peanut butter. So yeah, so the cast parameters. So my idea, just so that people maybe know what we're talking about as we're doing a Drupal streamcast, kind of having a little side conversation about Laravel, but I think it just helps also show how other frameworks um, interact. So it's a good topic. Let me get this next one copied. And I want to show, I want to show what we're talking about to folks who maybe haven't worked with Laravel. All right, so I have a cert pattern. Let me just go run. Actually. Functional tests, certainly. Add more missing stubs. Add add more methods to stubs. Let's commit and push, and let GitHub Actions do a few things for me. See what's left. So mutators and casting. So here you can say that when a variable or not a variable in Laravel on your model, you have this protect, you have this property called cast. And that says, Hey, when I fetch this property, cast it to this for me, there's various ones that are available, um, that they have defined. Like it could be hash. You could say Boolean float decimal, or decimal, no, just float integer, etc. So my idea is if we could bring the type data system to eloquent models, you wouldn't have to manually curate this. Because I've had that where it's like, okay, go into migration. Say that this is a Boolean field. Now I have to go to my model and make sure I cast it correctly. What if there's a way we could take lessons from the Drupal, um, the Drupal type data system and bring it into Laravel some ways. So this is actually pretty neat. Because I was recently working with the addressing library from Commerce Guys, aka Centaro, um, having to recreate the addressing module a bit. How do you insert a GIF in the Twitch chat? Oh. Um, yeah, having to remember all the places to manage it. Well, it's just one that that Lumen project I brought up. Um, the the front end's all in view and the code had a lot of like boolean checks well we upgraded laravel it was like lumen it was like laravel 5 and yeah troll level you broke me yeah um 
it was like Laravel 5 and PHP 5.6 or something like that. And we upgraded everything. Then we finally upgraded Laravel. We finally upgraded um, view and just everything started breaking because nothing was casted correctly. Oh, way to go me for breaking that. Um, composer dump auto load. Well, that's one way to prevent anything from actually running. Wait, class assert response rector test located in Assert located in assert response does not comply with PSR4 auto loading standards. What do you mean? Assert response rector. Oh, that's what it means. Oh, Chrome, I didn't want you to open. All right, I'm going to do a quick. Um, Add stubs, add tests. I'm just going to amend that commit to fix it up. Um, since I did an amend, the git history is all borked, so I need to do a force push to say that I have the canonical truth. And there we go. Yeah, And it's one that I definitely like the eloquent ORM over using like doctrine. Doctrine's neat, but I feel like I'm in Java and like to the core, which maybe it would be, I think Doctrine will be a lot simpler in PHP 8 with attributes. So then I would like that a lot. Um, but yeah, it's, they both have their pluses and minuses and also depends on what you started with. All right, great. We got failure 0.2 seconds and locally it's like taking forever to run this. Class be hink, be hat mink, web assert not found. Come on. I don't want to have to stub this too. All right, let's just go assert no raw. I'm just going to go through and we'll figure that out later. I think that's the best way to put it. It's not architecturally beautiful, but it's... Uh, Elegant. It works. It just it, it gets the job done. Um, the well, it's it's all about Laravel, like the macros and like the pass throughs. It can be very hard to debug and understand a lot of the magic, but it works. It gets the job done um, and fairly well. And it's not like trying to knock it or anything. Um, it's very effective. It is very speedy because it is fairly nimble. All right, this is just going to have this is going to be an empty function. Assert text, assert no text. You again will be an empty function. So I do highly recommend that if you are someone watching this and you primarily work with Drupal, you should just try creating like a project in Laravel or any other framework, honestly, um, just to try something different and see how other things do it. Debug Laravel, Matt. Uh, oh yeah, if you need to debug Laravel magic, you're in for a bad day. Yep, 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 I've been there, but I feel like I've had to debug Drupal magic too. So it's just wherever I go, I find pain in my code and having to debug. Um, be hat mink web assert not found. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out next because it's loading test data. So let's, the problem is, let's see, where's, is this the right one? Be hat. The core subfolder has the actual dependencies. The main one has the dev dependencies. So if we require mink, what are we going to also bring in? That's 
Symphony CSS selector. Yeah. Add in features of someone else's code, the perennial punishment of every developer. Yeah, we just solved one where instead of resetting values, it used a toggle. So essentially, whenever you change something, a series of checkboxes was the like intersection of what the other one didn't have. So everything that the previous one had got unchecked, and then the difference was checked. And we we're like staring at the code and couldn't figure it out. Yeah, that was a beautiful time. So let's see, this is complaining about not being able to auto load. Well here, let's actually run it locally. We get the test. One day I wanna go through and actually annotate these properly for what classes they're fixing or testing rather. All right, behat mink web assert not found. Web assert. Let's just add a stub. So I don't think we need to worry. Let's make a new directory called behat. Let's make a new directory called mink. Not like it really matters because we're not doing real auto loading, but web assert.php. And since this is actually namespace mink this could actually be auto loaded from composer easily so let's make sure we have this copy reference behat's another fun one too if you've ever had to debug through behat that is a blast to step through the behat command line and figure out what's going on um, and this, we're just gonna, we're just gonna run that and let's see if that fixes the test. It should, that should be enough to fix it. Oh, I need to dump the auto loader again because I added a new class. So if you're wondering why I have to do the dump auto load, I realized I didn't show this before. So in auto load dev, we're saying that the test namespace, but we have a class map. So it's saying, hey, go in this folder and just generate a class, like read the files and say that this class exists in this file. Um, so when I add new files, it's not automatically updated. I need to tell Composer to go find and update that. So let's run play and bam, we've got passing tests. So let's just, Let's say add stub for mink web assert. Let's push it and maybe we'll be green. I wonder if github.com PHP stand. Let's see, is there one so Web Mozart assert, that's not the same thing. View all repositories. Oh, that's right, we can't use the stubs from these anyways. So when looking at, um, let's go to Symphony. So when I bring up the stubs, so with PHP stand, it's, it's different. So PHP stand, you have this stubs directory and you create files with like the dot stub so that way it doesn't get indexed as PHP code. And it's really simple here, but with um, PHP Stan, they are registered as stub, oh, extension, sorry. They're registered as stub files, so they get auto-loaded and located differently. Rector doesn't use the same system. It has, it has to actually be auto-loaded. And if we look at Rector, so if we look at Symfony, the Rector for Symfony, we can see here the stubs are actually just like we had here and they're added to the composer.json and the autoload def. So that's, that's how Rector does it. It's different than how PHP stand does it. 
and I don't know how all I'm doing is scrolling. I managed to break the GitHub a lot. Why? What's going on here? Why is it going to the top? All right. So we still have a failure after 21 seconds. One left. Insert raw. So let's go get that test. Run it. And assert legacy trait inside functional test assert assert raw oh i said assert text assert no raw oh i i missed it there that's what i get for talking and copy pasting All right, so that passed. And to just keep the commits tidy, um, git add stubs, git amend, just amend it into there. To be honest, I don't know what I, I do something stupid, but I don't know how I get to that thing where it shows like your previous commands and then I just smash my keyboard till I get out of it. So if you think I'm like some powerful Vim user, I am not. I am dangerous enough and I like it more than nano um, or other, and I've never tried Emacs or whatever. It's just been Vim. All right, let's see if this passes. And if it does, that will make sure we're set here. Let me copy this pull request needs review. This keeps everything nice and nice and go. Save. Make sure I credit Palantir. Edit. Uh, Palantir, there we go. Save it. All right, now PHP units passing. That is awesome. Um, and we're only an hour in, sweet. So that means I can work on the next part, which is equally as thrilling. Um, creating fixtures for the functional testing. So what that means is you'll see here, function. we have this functional test. So let's actually just go into the details. So what it does is, it actually sets up a Drupal site inside the uh, subdirectory or a directory in the, outside of the workspace. It installs Drupal Rector. So you can see here, it's locking this commit. I hope that's the right commit. Um, 051D, that is not. Oh, mirroring, Never mind. this is the merge commit. Never mind. sorry. It's got its own merge commit that it's doing. So we can see here that it's mirroring from the local and we're installing the config. And what we do is we copy over this rector examples from the directory into the Drupal site. We run rector, which applies everything. And then we run a diff to make sure that everything was updated. And the problem is in the past, the, the sprinting, to get the rules added, I neglected on updating all these fixtures, which you can see is kind of a pain because we have to write the example and then we have to write the outcome and you can't test this locally very easy. It is definitely a try it, push it to GitHub, let GitHub's money get burnt and um, this, their CPUs tell us if it works or not. So that's the one unfortunate thing is it is very painstaking in time. Um, so this is good to go. That's good to go. Fixtures. So let's edit this. So add functional test code, test code samples. 
added fixtures for I'm just going to say it's for a certain element present and element not present. So we're going to start here. And let's go check out this branch, which the one thing that's super annoying, like GitLab gets this right. GitHub, not so much. I don't understand their thought process. So I click copy, but it copies the the source name. Like it, like no. Like I want to check out the branch. I don't want this. I don't want to have the source colon in there. Like Git, Git doesn't read that. GitLab, regardless of where the branch comes from, you just copy it and it copies the branch name. So thank you, GitLab, for getting a decent user experience on your merge request there. Um, so let's check out that branch. I'm going to delete. I mean, granted, I guess it's not that hard to remove it. But still, um, git rebase main. Let's start adding more functional tests. Which for this, okay, 9.0.x, the hard part is a lot of these were deprecated a long time ago, so there aren't a lot of usages in core um, of them. So let's start, I guess going down the list, assert element present. One of that copied value is used for, th for their CL tool. Copied value. Do you mean copy value? Do you mean the um this part? The um words are hard. The fixtures. Let's see. Source rector. A shirt sorry, cache tag, element present, not present. Oh, sorry. So I don't, the copy value. Oh, you mean like inside, um, I get it inside the CI tool, GitHub CI tool. I mean, maybe, but at this point you just do GitHub PR list. Ooh, me, I wonder, you know what? Maybe what we did, um, GitHub branch. Let's see. That's not a command actions repo clone create fork list sync view maybe maybe they well but they even use like slashes in there but maybe why did i do assert element present and all i tested was assert not present. Hold on. So it looks like I probably copied the wrong thing. Let's see if there's any examples. There's not going to be. So let's go to um, there we go. It looks like I copied the wrong parts of it. So assert element not present. And that should then give us these two examples. Um, assert text. That had one from Drupal post form. So the next would be assert escaped. Um, let's just copy this. So assert escaped test. Let's add it and we'll go to assert escaped. Oops. So the big thing is I basically copy the um, from the examples, which we're going to also do assert no escaped. And 
and then we copy this and put it into the functional and make sure I edit the right one because I had had I've done that where I've typed in I've started editing the original so we replace the after with what's expected and I'm quick going to probably going to do a bunch of commits for this because this is a lot and I want to be able to pluck anything out if I need to assert escaped and assert no escaped I'm gonna have to do a force push because I rebased that's two On to more. So I'm gonna copy that list of names. Let's do plain text. All right, we've got cash tag. Um, element present. text I mean, this should make it easy post form oh, I don't have that one in here so we'll start there there's going to be a handful of these I probably don't but we'll start with all the asserts we're going to start here and then try to figure out what doesn't have it uh, so I just did escaped See, we need to do I'm trying to remember I know we need to do we need to do that one the UI um, pass rector that was one that I added get raw content oh shoot this is one that probably needs to be added oh. Or content trait. Is this deprecated? Sure is. Looks like I should go back and fix that. So we get raw content, get all options. Get all options, um, field exists, entity view manager, those are all there, drip the URL rector, L update, these two. All right. So that's the list that needs to get fixed. push the fix there but I also need to go back and I need to fix this for some of these other ones that were missed so let's go I have no changes on this branch let's go here Xpath query selector. This should be again. Okay, so that's also in build Xpath query. So wait, so okay, so that one's fine. So that looks okay. Construct. 
this one needs to be updated because, or maybe not, but so much stuff. All right, so this one does need to be scoped, which we can copy from the pass rector. So use get the clearing source. Do some PHP CS there. Pass rector. And we need it to be from construct field trait. Copy the reference. Get that. Oh, return null. So we want that one to return null. Get all options rector. Fix is deprecated. It's not even right. This is get all options. And this extends abstract rector. So some of them extend like don't use the assert legacy trait one because they are um, more advanced. Get, get the clearing source. But luckily, I can copy from here. Let's see. So if the node doesn't match. Oh needs to test if parent class name is browser test base. Well, that's one way to do it. That was the old way, but here we'll do this. This is more direct. Do you have to use string reference instead of class? Yes, because it's not a dependency. We don't have the classes available in the PHP unit test. So what you might be able to, because we have the mocks, but it could get weird. Um, it could get weird. There's, we can't add Drupal as a direct dependency. So get raw content. Please extend. Oh. Wait, why? Why didn't I have this? Hold on. And more rules. So this can totally wait. Why? Oh, because it has to get the session node. Then so it does get session, get page, get content. That's why. Um. So that it's not a direct replacement of like a search session something. It's this get session, get page, get content is the replacement. That's why it's not using the assert legacy trait. But we can copy this right here. And that fixes my to do's that I had about testing with the functional JavaScript tests as well. That's not the class I wanted. Abstract rector. It's a whole bunch of things in here, but let's see. I think this is fine. This isn't shared. So we'll just leave that as is. Ah, I didn't want to close that scratch. Um, 883. Add non cert methods. So, okay, so that should fix that one. Let's get back to here. And here being the functional test code examples. Check out. And now I need to go find that scratch again. 309. Yes. 
All right, so I've got my scratch. That's gonna help me identify all of the functionals that we need. And we're gonna start working on the copies. So assert equals rector. Actually, did this pass? Great, it did. So let's go ahead and new file. There's gotta be a way I could just create classes or files based off of this, um, but let's just do, we're gonna copy paste as assert equal test. So I look at assert equal, copy this. I'll clean up, I'll have to clean up some stuff in here too. And that means we need to also have assert not equal. It's gonna go straight into the same method. And we can make this be called like test example, and then it's a little bit easier to copy paste. So if we copy this and the updated, it should be it just adds an S, that one's easy. Let's do field by ID, assert, Field by ID test. Oh yeah, this one's a biggie. This has a bunch of changes that can go into it. So we're gonna take the example. Why does it say that it can't find Am I gonna have to add more? Oh, I added all those stubs in the other. Oh wait, we're not using the stubs here. That's fine. Let's say I added all the stubs into the other um, branch, but that's fine. So let's copy this assert field by ID into functional and copy these supposed fixes. Let's do assert equal and assert field by D as the fixtures do a push and Check out the next ones. Oh, assert no field by it. Oh, of course, that's going to be in there too. Oh, whatever. I'm just going to go by name now. Assert field by name rector. So let's do field by ID to by name. copy the before so I went and I made sure when I wrote the rules I made sure to copy examples I could find from in core or the examples so at least that should be easy enough to do that I can copy the rule definitions um, but hopefully we can get folks to make sure they're the best they can be on the examples or test them thoroughly name assert field checked assert field checked test the before copy paste and adjust. Assert 
field vector. So just search field. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the right. Oh, come on. Where is it? Right there, deprecation, assert field, EF, F. So this is the examples. Copy, paste here with the updated. Like again, this is this goes to the whole fact of like this isn't hard to do, but I have no idea how to explain it to a junior to go through. Or I guess like that it's like kind of explaining it, but I feel like it would go awry. Like somehow it would go like who will be wrong. Um and our functional tests are failing already. Wait a second. Oh, that doesn't look right. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and commit this. Oh, wait, hold on. Cert field by name. Did I do it again where I copied? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That would do it. Um, that's examples. This is the updated. Okay, field by name. Field ID checked. I once again went and edited the wrong versions field test okay that one's right what is this saying assert field by id assert field by id okay so this did not work as this didn't run anything actually wait edit name is null mm. Edit name is test name. Hold on. All right. So there's some problems in here, period, but it also looks like I just made bad field by ID, field value equals. So I need to go look at this again. Assert field, that's, I mean, but that's why we're adding these tests is to catch where things are wrong. Um, fixes field by ID. So first off, this is my bad for having Incorrect examples. So let's fix this up. All right. And this is one I wish we could. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We have a PHP unit test for this. So why did the PHP unit test pass? Why? That's that's the other problem. Um, rector assert field by name. Oh, do I not have a test for this one? New rule definition. <gasps> well, that explains a lot because there's no test. So let's go look at here. We're going to copy this assert field by name. 
Oh, this is the part I hate because it's like I find bugs and I feel like that should be its own issue, but I don't have time for that. So it's going to go assert field by ID rector. We're going to add all the things. This is assert field by ID. Assert by field ID rector test. We got to rename the file. Fixture with value check, without value check. I'm just gonna rename it to just be called factor it sample PHP. Um, and so how the unit tests work is you copy, see, this is the example. So you take the code and it goes above and then you use the dashes to signify the other half of the file. So assert field by ID test, field by ID test, this should be what comes out of it. All right, let's see. What happens? So the test here, we need to fix the configured rule. So it's not field by name, it's assert field by ID, not test rector. Simplify. Okay, so we have a failure. We have something that's not working. Let's see if we can get it to work. Is through okay so now we we were able to replicate the failures and now it's time to fix it joy um so if we look at assert by field by id so it's supposed to go to field exist or field value equals and that's because you get the id and then value so if you pass null, it skips checking the value. So it's just field exists or button exists. If you use the empty quotes, you're asserting that the value is empty. Otherwise it must equal the actual value. So fun. That's where right here, oh wait, this is okay. Hold on, this is wrong. So null, to skip checking the value. So this is actually, this should be field exists. And this should be field value equals. Because I don't know how to read. Um, and this pass null too. So why this should be field exists. I had this all wrong. So that should be the example code. Speaking of going out to fix things in 5,000 places. That's what I have to do right here now. Um, I need to fix the example. I need to fix the test and the fixtures. So field by ID is there. Field by ID should be this. Now let's run the test to see. Okay, so it's when, it's when pass null is not working. So when it's null, that's what's not working. Field by ID rector. So count args equals three. So if there's three arguments, one, two, three, why would there be three field by ID? Search session, why would this be? Our count is equal to three. Create the search session node. So if there's one argument, 
we create the secondary argument to be the empty value. And that's exactly what we do here. Um, so by default, the value is an empty string, which means that the field exists and has an empty value. Check if argument two is a null and convert to field exists. So this is failing. And I remember this was beyond hard to debug. So let's do it again. So argument two is an instance of constant fetch and the name we need to do string to lower. Cool. Wait, can you, so string to lower. So I was gonna say, can you do that on a cast? But yeah, I just gotta wrap it here. And I bet we'll, we'll pass now. Ta-da. So args to value is a constant fetch. The name is null, but this is again one where it could be an uppercase or lowercase. So we need to make sure we always do string to lower. So let's stop, play, ta-da, it passes. Great. So that should be fixed. say fix assert field by ID assert field checked long commit message but oh well So let's push that and see if that resolves this here. So that's one reason we're going through and adding all the fixtures because it's going to catch these bugs. Um, so that way people don't think they're, they're good to go and then all of a sudden their things crash. Um, which is why it's also helpful people will start testing it because then we would know that certain things are busted. Oh, why is this frozen? Don't freeze on me because I didn't, I forgot to commit something. Uh oh. Don't freeze. It did freeze. I just don't want to have to retype this. Hopefully it wakes up when it's done analyzing the code. I know notice that's one thing is I don't know how to turn that off now. Like it automatically does the code analysis before you could bypass it when choosing the commit. Um, I'm guessing it maybe is behind that little cog. Get add test, get add source. Oh, we're just gonna have to fix this. Do get commit M, fix, blah, fix, assert field by ID. Fixtures for assert field by name. Assert field checked and assert field tests. Oh, 
force quit PHP storm. That's that's a, actually a first. Um, I know people are like, oh, well, PHP storm with indexing. I've never, actually never had it crash like that. Um, that's a new one. So let's go ahead and get that back open. All right, populate yourself. There we go. Give it a second to load back up. And it's failed again. Let's see where this failed. Dry run. Um, oh wait, hold on. Parsing, field checked. Oh. Field checked. Field by name. Wait, hold on. Par oh, parsing, assert field checked. Did I not actually commit everything? I did not. Then I do get, get add fixtures, get amend. Let's just amend that because otherwise that's just silly and we'll force push it. Okay, there we go. That should be better off. And let's get back to that scratch file down at the bottom. So we did things, no cert, no field by name, by ID, right? ID was the last one, a certain escape test. And this one's wrong. This one's wrong. Jeez. It's a problem with good old copy and paste. Um, all right, assert field by ID. Field by name. All right, let's go to assert. Let's create a assert header. Um, let's just copy paste this assert header test not PHP. So we'll add it. Find the record rule. So that's the before. Header test. Nothing's auto completing because it's indexing right now. Equal post form. That shouldn't matter, but we'll just in case it does. We'll fix that. So assert header test, let, let's copy it to here. Add, close the original, copy the fix, paste the fix. Let's fix this class name. All right, I hope that fixes that. Assert identical object. Oh. There are just so many things to do. Let's just copy. Right. Let's copy is sort of equal. This is my baseline of decent boilerplate, identical object. This is one thing I wish I could figure out how to get 
VS Code to do is to automate, um, automatically suggest a class name based off the file name. It is the one feature I love about PHP Storm that I cannot figure out in VS Code. So that's the original. Pasting the functional, and this is the fix. Which I guess I could have been put into a cert equal. Um, I know I grouped some things that way, but just going for ex to be explicit, I suppose. So assert identical rector. I'll put the nose inside of it. So identical test. So identical. That's the original. This is the fixture, which will be a search same. This is still failing. Let me see why this failed real quick. So I can try to do a quick fix. Hold up. What is this? Assert field by name. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, well we can fix. So assert field test. We have to add in the comment, which is this like if you meant it for a button, check for a button, um, assert field by name. So that's the examples, and then assert field by name. This is the fix. So that went okay, but these two did not. What happened? So it's supposed to be field exists. That doesn't look right. Because we got field value equals. Again, I made bad examples. So the rector worked correctly, but I um, had bad code in the example. So field exists and we should uppercase that to match um, Drupal coding standards. So assert, assert field by name. Assert field by name test, assert field by name rector. So we need to do the same thing here um, where we String to do lower. We do a string to lower check there. A null. Um, fix the example. So this is assert field by name. And also the Search field by name, fixtures. Oh, because this has a wonderful, weird example. Oh, so this was okay. So here this was fine, but I just had a bad example inside the rule. Okay. Let's go ahead and commit that. And I'm going to check, um, analyze code. I'm going to turn that off right now. Oh. Upload files to after commit. That's interesting. Um, all right. 
So let's review some diffs. The main fix here is assert field by name. Assert field. Uh, update assert field by name corrector add fixtures I don't know words are hard close my text file again I know you can pin things, but I think you can still close it if you pin it. So pin it. Like, oh, no, what? Silly, if you double click it, it goes away. Well, there's a recent file shortcut. Mm. I'll have to look into that because I close files all the time. Um, all right, I'm just closing a few of these up. I need to reset. Sorry. Working on this like drains my mental power real quick because it's tedious. Um, all right. Assert link by ref h ref. So let's go ahead and copy the baseline. So from assert equal to assert link by href. Rename the class. Get the rector. And copy the examples. So the one nice part about this is it's ensuring that the rule definition has good examples because there is a way to like generate docs from those rule definitions. So it's not complete, completely frivolous that I'm going through and prune or verifying all of these. So this is the source, which needs to turn into here. All right, so that's that one. Assert link. Let's just look at this. I'm just going to copy and paste this because it is very close in name. Assert link text test. So it goes to this. And that. Okay, so assert no field by ID. Mac combo, shift command E. Oh, oh, it's recent locations too. So it's not even just files. Is it like parts of a file too, maybe? Oh, I just got a Charlie horse. Sorry, I moved my leg weird and I just gave myself a Charlie horse. That looks like it's the right shortcut. Show only edited. Oh, nice. I like that. That is super helpful. Thank you. That is going to be in my new lifesaver. Um, oh, man. All right, so let's go ahead and field by ID. I'm actually going to just create we'll rename this now so it's test field by id and we'll make a new one that says test no field no field by id copy this source 
and let's go find the updated version of field by ID and it should equal this here. Which looks like this is probably field value not equals. That feels the value. Okay, so that looks like it should be correct. Let's do the same for assert. So these ones will duplicate in because it makes it a lot easier. So no field by name with field by name. So this is now test field by name. Test no field by name. Copy the source. And the expected fix. Um, no field checked. So we'll do this again, assert field checked. So no field checked, copy that over there. Um, field checked, I just realized in copy, oh, I'm gonna break a few things in here. And again, I closed everything reset myself without thinking about the fact that I needed that open. Um, this is the replacement. So what I realized I need to do also, so field by ID, I need to fix these method names because that's gonna cause a failure too. Field by name, field by name, test field checked, test field checked, shift command E to get back to my scratch file. And you can start, you can search, you can start typing and search for the file names. Oh, that is beautiful. Um, no field checked, now it's no field. So no field checked. Oh wait, I did no field checked. No field, sorry, it's just no field rector. No field rector. Test field. Test no field. I hear my two-year-old trying to break into the room. And I think he's about to be successful because I do not have a lock on the door. He is trying. Um, a certain no field. This has a comment as well. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. Test no field. Let me copy the fix. Make sure I fix the class, the field name there, the method name. Yeah, he won. Um, I need to get a lock put on it, but instead I just put weights on the ground. But he manages to push them out of the way. So I guess I'm just secretly training my two-year-old to be extra strong at pushing stuff. Um, assert no link. Wait, assert link by href. Let's do that here. And that means we can duplicate this to test no link. So this is the examples. And this is the fix. Let's copy that. 
Command D to duplicate. And this should be no link href. Maybe I just say href in my brain, but out loud I do say href. I know I, I, I started with by just saying how I think it in my mind, but when I say it out loud, href is a lot better. Um, link. All right, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to get to here. I'm going to do this no link, and then I'm going to call it um, because then I don't have to create any new files. Like I'm kind of just fixing where I started. Seems like a good breaking point. Um, test link. Test no link. Yeah, it seems like a good pause point, and that way I can um, get some dinner. Insert no link Come on. and figure out what I did to my leg. I ran my first 10K today and apparently I overdid it a little bit. Not overdid it, but I didn't drink enough water afterwards. Um, see, test no link. Let's see examples. Here we go. And my brain is just fried out. I did my cooldowns. I did all that, but like I like pulled my leg a little weird while sitting. So I'm not sure what I did. Um, shoot, that's the examples. I need the updated. There we go. All right, so I'm going to. Add more functional fixtures. That's good enough. I'm gonna push that. Now I'll do is say it needs review. A good, I'll say about more than half have fixtures added via this PR, link to the PR. Here's the remaining items for when I back yep thanks for tuning in as always it's always nice to have somebody hang out while i do this so as i get ready to sign off and you get ready to sign off have a good one and i got this pushed up the tests are running the tests are passing hold on let's see here What's going on? All right, I just want to see what happens with this functional test and then I'm going to head out. Oh, wait. It passed. Sweet. It passed on 7.4. That means at least this could get merged and then we could work on the rest of these afterwards. So thanks for tuning in. Again, thanks to Palantir for sponsoring my time to work on this project. Um, the community. I'm sure it's very grateful for that because this streamlines um, the whole upgrade process from Drupal 8 to 9, 9 to 10, and then when we get to 10 to 11 in two years. Um, even though the code I'm working on right now is for the 9 to 10 upgrade, this is going to ensure that it's still working if you are doing 8 to 9 upgrades uh, later this year um, and so on. So thanks for tuning in and have a good one.